Hi, my name is John Sustar, and I'm a marketing engineer in the CDS group at Terrain. Today, I'm going to be talking about modeling with ASHRAE Standard 62.1 and TRACE 700. Specifically, I'm going to be talking about the ventilation rate procedure, which is covered in 6.2 of ASHRAE Standard 62.1. The standard prescribes the quantity of outdoor air that must be delivered to each zone based on the expected use of that zone, and then prescribes how to calculate the outdoor airflow needed at the system level intake. In today's video, I will show you the process for calculating the outdoor airflow for a multi-zone system and walk you through a hand calculation. I'll then show how TRACE determines zone level and system level outdoor air fractions. And lastly, I'll go through some common questions that come up when applying 62.1 ventilation in TRACE. This includes a methodology for resolving 100% outdoor air. So to describe the multi-zone calculation process, I'm going to be walking you through a simple example and show you how TRACE solves for the outdoor air intake. For this example, let's solve for outdoor air intake for a two-zone VAV system in an office building. The design peak airflow for each zone is 1600 CFM with a 25% minimum stop and the system block airflow is 2,560 CFM, which equates to a system diversity factor of 0 0.8. The system's design airflows correspond to the following variables in the 62.1 calculation. As shown in the system schematic, the system's block airflow corresponds to the variable V sub PS, the zone's design airflow corresponds to V sub PZ, and the minimum stop airflow corresponds to V sub PZ min. The first step in the calculation is determining the zone level parameters for airflow rates and distribution effectiveness. Using table 6-1 in the standard, you can determine the R sub A, the outdoor airflow rate per unit area, and R sub P, the outdoor airflow rate per person in the zone. Additionally, Table 6-2 is used to determine the zone air distribution effectiveness. Next, using the R sub A and R sub P from Table 6-1, you can calculate the breathing zone outdoor airflow, V sub BZ, using equation 6-1 from the standard. In this equation, P sub Z represents the number of people in the zone, and A sub Z represents the zone's unit area. In step three, you can calculate the zone outdoor airflow V sub OZ. This is the outdoor airflow rate that must be provided to the ventilation zone by the supply air distribution system. The zone outdoor airflow rate is calculated using the equation V sub OZ equals V sub BZ divided by E sub Z. So now that we know the equations for the zone level outdoor airflow rate calculation, we can calculate V sub BZ and V sub OZ for zone 1 and zone 2. In this example, a VAV system supplies cool air to each zone from the ceiling so that the zone air distribution effectiveness is 1.0. As a result, V sub OZ equals V sub BZ. Using the equations for calculating zone airflow rates, zone 1 requires 240 CFM of outdoor air and zone 2 requires 80 CFM of outdoor air. Looking at trace, the 62.1 ventilation airflows are calculated for each zone when the apply ASHRAE standard 62.1 field is set to yes on the create rooms airflows tab. The outdoor airflow rate required per person and per unit area for each space type listed in the type field is determined from table 6-1. These values vary based on the space type. The zone outdoor airflow calculation also accounts for the zone air distribution effectiveness found in table 6-2 and are entered in the cooling and heating E sub Z fields. The second step in applying 62.1 in tray 700 is to select the ASHRAE 62.1 flag in the Create Systems Advanced window. This step is very important, and if not applied, TRACE will not provide an accurate calculation of the outdoor airflow rate. 
Now after you run your analysis with 62.1 applied in both the rooms and the system, there will be a 62.1 report available that reports the calculation results with all the 62.1 parameters laid out. In the Trace 62.1 report, the Zone Ventilation Parameters section of the report will display the calculated V sub VZ and V sub OZ values for each zone in the cooling and heating mode. In this report, you can see that Trace calculated VOZ for Zone 1 to be 240 CFM and in Zone 2 to be 80 CFM, which aligns with our calculations. So let's move on to Step 4, where we will calculate the Zone Primary Outdoor Air Fraction for each zone, which is represented as Z sub P. The primary outdoor air fraction is the amount of outdoor air that must be supplied to each breathing zone as a percentage of the minimum expected primary airflow, which accounts for both outdoor air and recirculated air at design conditions delivered to the breathing zone. It is calculated using the equation 6-5 in the standard, where Z sub P equals V sub OZ divided by V sub PZ min. In trace 700, V sub PZ min is set in the VAV minimum rate field on the Create Rooms Airflows tab. In this example, the minimum stop is 25%, which equates to 400 CFM. The zone with the highest Z sub P, which can also be represented as Z sub D in a VAV system without secondary recirculated airflow, is called the critical zone. In this case, Zone 1 requires 60% of the system primary air to be outdoor air. If 60% outdoor air were to be introduced through the air handler to meet the critical zone, both zones would receive 60% outdoor air and Zone 2, which has a 20% outdoor air fraction requirement, would be overventilated. This overventilation of Zone 2 results in unused outdoor air that is recirculated in the return air coming from these zones. The unused outdoor air can be used to offset the outdoor intake requirements for the system. In order to take credit for the unused outdoor air, the standard applies a system level efficiency, which I'll cover in the next couple of steps. Looking at the TRACE report for ventilation calculations for cooling design, you can see that TRACE identifies Z sub D for each zone and denotes the critical zone with an asterisk on the right side of the report. In step 6, we need to determine the uncorrected outdoor air intake airflow, which is represented by V sub OU, for the system by totaling the breathing zone outdoor airflow requirements from all the spaces served by a common system using equation 6-6. -6. In this equation, the variable D represents occupant diversity, which can be entered into trace in the advanced window within the create systems in the population diversity input. Assuming occupant diversity equal to 1, the V sub OU equals the sum of the breathing zone airflow rates, which is 320 CFM. Here is the trace report showing the uncorrected outdoor air intake flow V sub OU for the system in the system ventilation requirements section of the trace report. Next, the average outdoor air fraction X sub S is calculated by dividing the uncorrected outdoor air intake by the system primary airflow, V sub PS, which is the fan design airflow. In trace 700, V sub PS is reported as V sub fan on the ASHRAE standard 62.1 report and is also equal to the main fan airflow found on the system checksums report. The uncorrected outdoor air fraction, which is X sub S, is shown in the system ventilation requirements section of the TRACE 700 report. Next, we need to determine the system ventilation efficiency, which is the variable that describes the percentage of first pass system outdoor air that dilutes indoor pollutants. Larger system efficiencies translate into higher percentage of used ventilation air. You can determine E sub V by Table 6-3 when the critical zone Z sub D is less than 0.55 or by using Appendix A in the standard. Since the critical zone Z sub D is greater than 0.55, you must use equation A-2 in the standard 
which is e sub d equals 1 plus x sub s minus z sub d max. And for our final step in the calculation, we need to determine the system outdoor intake airflow v sub ot using the equation v sub ot equals v sub ou divided by e sub b. Solving for this equation, you get 610 CFM of outdoor intake. This corresponds to 24% outdoor airflow on the system level at cooling design conditions. Here's the trace results showing E sub V, V sub OT, and the percent outdoor air values at cooling design conditions. Now that I've gone through the example, let's briefly discuss some common questions. First, you might encounter that your system requires 100% outdoor air in the trace model calculation. The reason for this calculation is due to the critical zone requiring 100% outdoor air. Since critical zone outdoor air fractions are calculated using minimum stop air flows, you can resolve this 100% outdoor air requirement by increasing the minimum stop air flows of that critical zone. The quickest way to increase minimum stops is to use the max vent allowed input in the advanced window of Create Systems. Here I show two systems. One requires 100% outdoor air and the other I've set a max Z sub D of 75%. In the top table you can see that in our two room example the VOT equals 2560 CFM which is equal to the block air flow rate. In the bottom table is the system where I've applied a 75% max Z sub D ratio and you can see that that reduced the outdoor air percentage to 42.9% at cooling design conditions. It is left to your discretion to define the max vent Z ratio allowed value, but beware that this input can drastically change your energy analysis results. While reducing the ventilation fraction decreases outdoor air intake flow, which reduces ventilation loads, there are some drawbacks. First, it increases the fan energy because of the higher system air flows. Additionally, using this ratio increases the amount of VAV reheat required if present to temper the air delivered to the affected zones, or it may lead to overcooling in the affected zones without reheat. For our two-room example that requires 100% outdoor air, here's a plot of the impact of the maximum zone outdoor air fraction on the system outdoor intake airflow and critical zone minimum airflow rates. The y-axis shows the air flows in CFM and the x-axis shows the max Z sub D. If we start at the right side of this plot at 100%, you can see that as you decrease the max Z sub D, you decrease the outdoor intake airflow, which is represented by the blue diamonds because the system efficiency increases. However, the downside is that you increase the critical zone minimum airflow, which is represented by the green triangles, which will result in more fan energy and more reheat during the system simulation. The next common concern is why the ASHRAE multi-zone spreadsheet does not match the TRACE 700 output. When using the ASHRAE spreadsheet, the key inputs in the spreadsheet that will likely be causing the discrepancy are the percent of total design airflow rates at condition analysis inputs, also known as the D sub S variable. The system D sub S represents the system diversity percentage, and the zone D sub S values represent the zone minimum stop percentages. And lastly, we often get the question of why Trace calculates Z sub D using minimum stop air flows. In the standard, it defines V sub PZ for VAV systems as the minimum expected primary air flow for design purposes. So Trace is being conservative in its assumption that the minimum expected air flow in the critical zone at design conditions equals V sub PZ min. It's important to realize the airflow rates using the ventilation rate procedure in 62.1 should be considered minimum outdoor airflow rates. So with that in mind, Trace uses the minimum stop airflow as a way of ensuring that the proper amount of ventilation is being supplied to meet the critical zone even in worst case conditions, which is when the system airflow is at design airflow rates 
and the critical zone airflow is at minimum stop. If you're interested in learning more about applying 62.1 in Trace, I'd recommend checking out Chapter 4 of the Trace 700 User's Manual and looking at the F1 help within the program. If you're looking for applications information, we also have a few engineer newsletters discussing ASHRAE 62.1 found at train.com forward slash en. And lastly, visit train.com forward slash continuing education to view videos that are free and on demand that get into details about ASHRAE 62.1. Thanks for watching this video. Feel free to contact us if you have any additional questions.